entering Ohio. So we're like an exit for the first one or whatever. Section 114. Nelson Stanfield. Wow. Lola Gleason. I don't think it's over here. I had never been to my mother's grave, Maybe so with map in hand, I searched for it. And it wasn't easy because she never had a marker. Maggie Dave. Is she near her? It says she's next to Maggie Dave, but she's not. And Mary Williams, two spaces away. But it's, I haven't found Mary Williams yet. Give me another minute. I know it's about to close. I was racing against the sun and the cemetery's closing time, but my next attempt at going back, I found it pretty quickly. This has to be. This has to be it right here. This is kind of neat. This is like the closest I've been to her in 27 years. For most of my life, my mother has only existed in pictures, hazy, fragmented memories, and in my dreams. Sometimes I don't know if my dreams are memories or if my memories are dreams. Not long ago, I went on a journey to find out more about her. I decided that it was finally time to ask all of the questions that I had pinned up on the inside of me. Who was she? What was she like? What was her life like? 
Why did she die so young? So today, I will open a door into the past. Hey. And ask all of the questions that I have had for so many years. Eva, we're going to do this last. We're going to do this first. So this requires a, a, just a natural look. And then a second makeup application, build up a little heavier, give her a little bit more sultry eye. If you haven't figured it out by now, my name is Eva, and I'm a freelance makeup artist. I've been doing makeup since 1993 and have earned two Emmy Awards for my work. I've even co-authored a book for aspiring makeup artists. I've worked on films, music videos, television, news, theater, and print, to name a few. I've done many famous faces and met lots of people. You name it, if it required makeup, I've probably done it. I like to joke and say the only person I have yet to do is Michael Jackson. I've always enjoyed drawing and painting, and my family says that my art gift came from my mother. My mom's name was Helen Lorraine Smith, and her nickname was Lynn. My mom died uh, 21 days before her 33rd birthday, or at least she was found dead. She, um, they said she'd been dead for maybe a few days, maybe two or three days. And um, I was with her, I understand. I mean, I don't remember it, so. I still want to talk to some people and find out what really happened that day because it's like if I have so many memories of her before then, why wouldn't I remember something that seems like it was such a tragic event that should have shaped me in some kind of way. I was um, only six years of age, so I didn't really know her that well. She uh, had a lot of issues, I hear. I was never really told a lot about her or who she was. We look a lot alike. I have lots and lots of pictures of her. That is one thing I guess that keeps her memory so alive with me is I, I just have so many pictures of her. It's like I tried to piece together what her life would have been like by the different pictures. I wish I could remember more about her and I think that's one of the reasons that I'm doing this project, I'll get to contact a lot of people who knew her, find out what they remember. Maybe it'll help jog my memory some. I love going home to Ohio. We usually stay with my cousins. This was my cousin Gail's house. Her sister Kathy came by every day, and my cousin Angie lived there too with her daughter Taylor. My family was extremely helpful to me during my search, and I was able to set up my headquarters there where I could make all of my calls and set appointments to meet with other people who knew my mother. Okay, bye. She was like, I got to go. I got to go. She was just like, I'm busy. I'm too busy. I'm, well, my, family, ready for my family can't catch me. That day, I planned on visiting the street that my mom grew up on, Hildreth Avenue, and speaking with some of the people that grew up on her same block. She spent all of her childhood there and even moved back to the same street when she became an adult. Angela? Can you please do a map quest for me? But first, I had contacted the actual coroner who signed off on her autopsy, and I was scheduled to meet with him. I was hoping that he could explain the findings with me so that I could have further understanding of what really caused her death. They always told me that she died from a heart attack. I grew up thinking my mom had a heart attack. Alright, I gotta go, Sandra, because I'm like lost. <laughs> Alright, bye. 2514. Okay. It should be right. There it is. As I pulled up to the former coroner's office, I was so eager to speak with him. 
because I was closer than I'd ever been to some of the answers that I'd been searching for for so long. Now he's not going to do an interview. It happens. That was a really big letdown. So now basically I was starting over from ground zero. I need the coroner's office for um, Franklin County, I guess, as a county coroner. Despite the occasional setback, I pressed forward. For every person that didn't want to talk with me, there were others who did. So I set up other appointments. Yeah. Hey, it's Eva. I'm on my way over. I checked in regularly with my husband to keep him abreast of my triumphs and my challenges. Came from the doctor's office and he reneged. He backed out on me. Oh, really? Yeah, so, well, you know, you have a, a little bit of low, but then now, you know, I get to squeeze something else in. We're making progress. We're making progress. I just want to get all the people that I can get while I'm here that are willing. I had heard all my life when I was growing up about this jet setter, this woman, this trend setter, jet setter, I mean, just all around bad girl, okay, mm -hmm. who had money, because she, you know, she didn't, our parents had money, her father was a podiatrist, and her mother was a hairdresser, and she was spoiled, and she was the only child and dressed to a T in gorgeous little dresses and shiny little shoes. Always dressed nice. She was the best dressed girl on campus. You know, all the girls, two or three of her friends told me that. What did your, what did your aunt and them do for a living? Said, boy, Lynn, buy some bad clothes. I always hear that she had such a beautiful body and she had these big legs. And I'm built a lot different from her. I'm more tall and lean. And she was more of a, you know, shapely figure. I used to see pictures of her, and yeah, I knew I looked a lot like her, but I still wished I looked more like her. Your mother was absolutely gorgeous. The guys would watch her walk by, and it was like, wow, look at Lynn, because she was just built, you know? I mean, she was, she was 14 years old and looked like she was 20. She had a beautiful body. I can go on and talk about how much, you know, how, how sweet she was and all that, but my first memories of her were strictly of a 14-year-old boy. She was, she was, she was <laughs> talking to her daughter. I can't... <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I mean, she was neat, but she, you know, Lynn was really stacked, as you say. She always wore real short dresses and she could walk down the aisle proudly and a lot of women look at her like, who does she think she is? Amongst the girls, she wasn't too popular, but the boys, she was. <laughs> there could be 10 of us sitting on a blanket at the beach, and I think we were all pretty nice looking women, but they would just come over like a magnet to her. My God, she is stacked up like a brick shit house, you know. <laughs> okay. And, it was, and, and she was be skinny like you. Oh, my mom when she yeah, was younger. Yeah, yeah. But then she... And long legs. And then the next year or so, hell, I didn't even hardly recognize her. <laughs> Maybe you'll get that way too, baby. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little older now. <laughs> there, there was that sex appeal that she had that nobody else had. She was, she was so far out of my league that I would never even have entertained the wildest thoughts, you know, of dating her. She was so sophisticated. She was classy. You know. She had Cadillacs, did she not? And I don't mean one, I, I mean a couple. 1963 or 64 Cadillac blue convertible. The only girl on the, on the campus that had a Cadillac convertible. So, okay. When we were little, Lynn was like up here. She had everything. I mean everything. You know, any, you know the things you think you wish you had, Lynn had it. She was just... Somebody I always wanted to meet, you know, because she was like le almost legendary.
lived a life um, back then that was pretty high society. They were in Jack and Jill, and my mother was a debutante. I guess I never realized that, you know, all that that meant back in the 50s and late 40s. But they were living pretty well. In the day in Columbus, there was this um, social system, okay? And your grandmother and your grandfather were in the social system. We used the term 500 crowd back then. That means that they were very, they were professional people or um, important people, doctors, you know, uh, lawyers, uh, teachers, a lot of teachers. One of the things I liked about your grandmother was that she was unpretentious. She was a domestic and your, fa your grandfather was a college student and had met her coming to visit uh, one of his pals and she was working there at the house. And uh, she just made her way into that world because all the people were professional people that they knew and she, she didn't have a degree other than being a beautician. But it never took her dignity away. And your grandmother entertained a lot. Gorgeous house. A lot of times when uh, your grandmother would have um, actually birthday parties for your mother, we wouldn't always get invited. And I, I felt very hurt about that because we'd look over the fence and see the party going on and we lived right next door and that was our friend. And we weren't invited. See, my father was a doctor. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to think because it was, it was kind of like I could hang out with Lynn and Lynn could hang out, could hang out with me because you know how certain cliques, you know. Later on I, I realized that it was a, a different group of people. It was more uh, society type people uh, then, and we weren't considered society. Your grandfather was a, a very handsome man, fine, you know, gentleman. Your grandmother shared with me that he spoiled Lynn, that your aunts, uh, what was it, Mrs. Aunt Charlotte? Yeah, that she didn't think that Lynn should have had the expensive clothes and the toys that she got from them, but, you know, she always assume because that that was his only child and this is how they did things. She wouldn't have done it that way, I believe, but she couldn't fight off of it. Wow. Mm -hmm. My um, Aunt Charlotte was my, she's actually my great Aunt Charlotte. She was my mother's aunt, my grandfather's sister. She was a principal and she was a very wealthy lady. She was always making sure that Lynn didn't want for much of anything. I think that uh, Charlotte was the one that made the rules. I don't think Charlotte really ever felt that Georgia was high enough on the social wheel. Do you know what I mean? Even for her brother. So then here comes Lynn, and I think Charlotte feels, I'm doing this. Aunt Charlotte was really behind her. Aunt Charlotte was really, really behind her because she, she disappointed Aunt Charlotte a couple of times. But then when um, Lynn doesn't meet her expectations, then I think that she, I don't want to say dropped her, but she was disappointed in her. And um, Lynn and um, Mrs. Smith, they couldn't talk. I know that. Yeah, she loved and enjoyed it, but you know, a typical mother-daughter situation and power struggle sometimes. Or oh, was rebellious? at everything that she wanted for her in life. Like she just took a, a knife and just put it in her mother's back. Yeah, take this because I'm not gonna do that. She didn't treat your grandmother too good. She damned and slammed, oh, bitch, I don't have to listen to you or something like that, you know. They always stressed, you know, um, what kind of people you hang around. You know, and Georgia was like, what are people gonna think type of mentality. At the end, on the other hand, like, really, frankly, I don't give a damn what people think. You know, I'm just being me and I'm going to be me. The very first person who I wanted to find was my mother's best friend. Her name was Panchita. 
That name has stuck deep within me all these years. I guess because of its uniqueness, the sound of her name still gave me a warm feeling inside. It took me about half a day on the internet, but I finally found a current phone number. She was extremely excited to hear from me and welcomed my visit. I was so looking forward to meeting the woman that my mom called her best friend. golden sun is sinking, when your heart from care is free, when of, when of absent friends you're thinking, won't you sometimes think of